Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a functional equation from Poland. f of x plus y minus f of x minus y is equal to f of x times f of y. From real numbers to real numbers, we're going to go ahead and find the function f that satisfies this equation. All right, we're going to do this step by step, and I'm going to try to go over every step this is probably not the only way to solve this problem. If you have alternatives, please let us know in the comment section down below. Let's get started. So first step, I'm going to go ahead and replace x and y with 0. A lot of times when you're solving functional equations, you want to do this. Either replace both x and y with 0 or one of them with 0 and proceed with that because that's going to give you some specific special values which you can use later on and in some cases it just gives you the solution it could be super duper quick so it's worth trying so when you replace x and y with zero at the same time you're going to be getting f of zero which is x plus y right plus actually that's a minus sign f of x minus y which is zero again equals f of x times f of y which is going to be f of 0 times f of 0. Awesome. Now, what is f of 0 minus f of 0? If you subtract anything from itself, you get 0. So this is equal to 0. In other words, f of 0 squared, because it's multiplied by itself, is equal to 0. And that 0 comes from here, by the way, in case you haven't noticed. So we got something interesting f of 0 squared, something squared is 0. So what number squared is 0? That's the next question you need to answer. And the answer is 0. So from here we get f of 0 equals 0. This may not look like a lot of progress, like, oh, so what? I mean, you just found a particular value. And let's say we find f of 1. That's just another point on the graph, right? How do you go from this to the general function? We're going to build it, okay, step by step. That's what we're trying to do here. Great, so let's go ahead and take a look at the second step now. So again, I'm going to write down the equation here, f of x plus y minus f of x minus y equals f of x times f of y. We're going to go ahead and replace x with 0 again, but this time we're going to leave the y alone. You could also say replace y with y, but that doesn't mean anything, just leave it alone. So if you do that, the only the x will be affected, so you're going to get f of 0 plus y, which is f of y, minus f of 0 minus y, which is f of negative y, equals f of 0 times f of y. Awesome. Again, leave the y alone. Don't replace it with anything. And replace x with 0. That's what it is. Okay? So what does this give us? Well, f of y is unknown. What is that supposed to mean? But we know from the previous step, that's why it's important to do these things step by step. Follow every step carefully. We know that f of 0 is equal to 0. So 0 times any value, it could be 0 as well, doesn't matter, is 0. Great. This is a huge improvement because this gives us a more general statement than the first one. Notice what that gives us. f of y minus f of negative y equals 0. And if you put this on the right hand side, I kind of switch sides because I want to have the negative on the left. f of negative y is the same as f of y. This is really cool because this tells you that, okay, if you change your input to its opposite, you still get the same output. And this just means that f is even. Now, knowing f is even or odd is a good thing because think about it, for example, in terms of polynomials, which functions are even? f of x equals x squared is even, but g of x equals x cubed is an odd function. So that definitely gives us an idea. If f is a polynomial, then we should be uh, able to, you know, kind of think about what it looks like. That's the second step. So let's go ahead and talk about the third step. The third step is replacing y with x. And this could also be interpreted as replacing x with y, doesn't matter, it should give you the same thing. All right, great, so let's go ahead and do it. We had f of x plus y and f of x minus y, so they're being subtracted. Hopefully by this time, you memorize this. So I'm gonna replace 
y with x, so it's going to be f of x plus x minus f of x minus x equals f of x times f of x. So everything turns into x because we replace y with x. Isn't that cool? Now, let's go look at the conclusion from here. f of 2x, this is going to be minus f of 0, and this will be f of x squared. Great. This is also another general statement that can be used because notice you can replace x with pretty much anything from the set of real numbers. But we're not going to do it. We're just going to simplify as much as possible. f of 0 is 0. Remember, that was the very first thing we found. See how valuable that is? That's why we had to do that first. And for me, we get the following. f of 2x equals f of x squared. Great. Now, you might just take it to another level and say, make some inferences like, okay, do you think f of 3x is going to be f of x cubed or f of n times x where n is an integer is going to be f of x to the power n? You can definitely make a suggestion like guess and then check. And guess and check might sound like a really loose method, but it's actually induction, right? You make a guess and then if uh, it holds for certain values, let's say for x equals or for n equals 2, and then if you can show uh, or just assume that it holds in the general case and that assumption implies the next case, then you kind of get a stare of cases. And then that kind of gives you a general consequence or result. Okay? So far, we got the following statements. Let's go ahead and proceed with the next step, which is step number four. In step number four, we're going to replace. Now, so far, let's go ahead and recap what we've done. We replace x and y with 0 at the same time, and that's important, by the way. And then we just replace x with 0 without touching the y. And then we replace y with x, which turned everything into uh, this form, so that everything is in, term of, in terms of x, which is nice. And then, uh, by the way, if you replace x with y, you should be getting the exact same thing for f of 2y, which would not really be anything additional. And uh, step number four, we're going to replace y with negative x. Awesome. And guess what that, uh, that's going to give us? f of x plus y, x plus negative x, minus f of x minus negative x equals f of x times f of negative x. Remember, it's right-hand side is f of x times f of y. Great. Again, this is everything is in terms of x, but let's simplify it. This is going to be 0. This is going to be double negation, 2x. So we get f of 0 minus, pay attention to the sign, f of 2x equals f of x times f of negative x. This might look a little confusing because even though we do know, okay, f of 0 is 0, this kind of gives us something weird because we kind of have too many unknowns, right? What is f of 2x? What is f of x? What is f of negative x? But wait a minute. You can really come up with something nice from here. You know why? Because f of 2x, I can replace it with something. How? Look at step number 3. f of 2x is the same as f of x squared. Let's do that. We're going to replace f of 2x with f of x squared. Great. But of course, you have a minus sign, so you just have to keep the minus sign, right? And then f of x and f of negative x. Did we get that before? We did. Take a look at step number two. That's why keeping track of steps impor is important. We got f of negative y is f of y, and f is even. But wait a minute, this is not f of y, it's f of x and f of negative x. It doesn't matter, those are just dummy variables. This means it applies in this case too. f of negative x is the same as f of x. So this is f of x times f of x, which is f of x squared. Uh-oh. Did we get the same thing? Well, sort of, with the opposite sign. If we got f of x squared equals f of x squared, that would be really silly because that wouldn't really give us anything. 0 equals 0 is not, like, really something new, right? So, but this is different because they come with different coefficients, which is nice. It's kind of like this, 2a equals a, or negative a equals a. When does that happen? When a is 0, of course, right? So if you put everything on the same side, you get f of x squared times 2 equals 0, which implies that f of x squared is 0. And again, 
we kind of come back to square number one or step number one. What number squared is zero? The answer is zero. So f of x equals zero from here. But this is true for all x values that are in the domain, which means it's a general statement, which means our function is identically zero. Again, this is building something step by step. I hope you are able to or you were able to follow the steps. Let me know how that went. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.